welcome back to Let's Play Omori. Last time we made it to Otherworld, and we did a couple side things here, uh, among which uh, fighting the guy right here, and completed some side quests. Before we get on with the game, uh, just a couple more side things that I want to do. It's not really critical that we do these things right now, but it is slightly helpful if we do so. I'm not going to explore all of the secondary areas in Otherworld right now, because honestly there isn't too, too much we can do in them until after we complete the main objective here, but there is a couple things that are helpful to do right now. Got some veggie kids here on an adventure, and I've broken their formation horribly. I'm sure they'll get back in. Yeah. Oh, no, never mind. A lot of uh, Venus flytraps here. Uh, just a fun little fact, uh, if you defeat the Venus flytraps, as far as I know, they're just gone forever. Speaking of which, this one's blocking an item, so let's get him out of our way. You know what, I may as well have Omori use Bread Slice. It's ever so slightly stronger than just uh, his regular attack. Now, uh, between uh, this video and the last, the game actually uh, updated the version uh, 1.02, and uh, I was reading the patch notes, and apparently people have a fairly low opinion of uh, Kel and think he's too weak. I honestly think Kel's the best party member in the game, but... Whatever the case, they saw fit to give him a buff, so now he should get more HP throughout the game, which should be pretty handy. Now, it's a bit of a bad habit of mine that I play a little too conservatively in this game and don't really make good use of my juice. That should take him out. There we go. Playing a little risky there, but it, it's okay. Remember, Omori can survive a fatal hit with 1 HP, so it's no big deal if he gets taken out. That said, I'll spare myself some risk by just topping him off a little bit here. Who's this guy? It is Lomi. Now, what do we got here? It looks like a message in a bottle. Sure. That's Omori. You know, I've never answered anything but Omori to that message, uh, just to complete the pun. I'm not sure if it actually does anything. I suppose I could come back on my own time and check that later, but I don't really feel like it. What do we got here? Looks like a dance floor. Would I? Oh yeah. <sighs> if only Jock Jams were here. You know, it's just not the same without him. Let's finish that off. And what do we have here? Well, rude. I think we totally deserve to go in, but whatever. Maybe we'll get the password later. Now over here, we got a shiny telescope. Let's check out the view. And checking this out, you just get a nice little uh, matte painting of the area that you can scroll the telescope over. There isn't really any purpose to this. Uh, like, actually, oh, looks like there's a spider on the moon. Like, actually, anything worthwhile you get for it. But there is an achievement associated with looking through all the telescopes in the game, so if you're going for all the achievements, make sure to hit those. And through the magic of editing there, we have skipped past that battle. No sense in showing fights with the same enemies that we've already fought, especially when it takes a little while to chunk through them. Just as a note, every bunny-type enemy in the game adds to uh, your bunny kill count. So that, uh, those space bunnies? Oh, looks like there's a crow over there. Those count towards uh, completing that quest. Oh, actually, you know what? Just a... ow, oh, it went away. Let's see if I can aggro it. Eh, well, I can get it on the way back. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, every bunny we kill adds towards that quest for killing them, and remember, we need to kill up to 50 to get the full rewards for that quest. Looks like we're inside that area that we saw passing by uh, on the ladder, and we got some cardboard. Cardboard is recyclable, just like the can from the last video. Uh, we recycle that and get some clams back, plus some occasional prizes. Cardboard uh, returns for a lot more than the can does. Hmm, that's a familiar looking reward there. Not sure how this guy won most horse, but uh, now we know who uh, Small lost out to. Alright. This game throws life jams at you. That's why I had no problem using it in the Pluto fight. You will find life jams all the, all over the place, just out the wazoo. Almost forgot to check this ladder. 
Hmm. Maybe someday. Now there is actually something we can do with that particular NPC. Ooh, computer part. Those uh, return for the most at 25 clams. Very nice. But there is something else we can do with that uh, Batsy NPC. But we can't do it right now because it requires a mechanic we have not activated yet. <laughs> it's good to appreciate your home. Remember, it's yours. So what it is is what you make of it. What's this guy's deal? Well then. Some dead batteries. I think those are the second most valuable trading for 20 clams. It's either those or the cardboard. And can. Cans are useless. We have all but one variety of, uh... Hmm. This problem's moved away. Hmm. I'm sure he does. But anyways, uh, there's one variety of uh, recyclable we have not seen yet, the glass bottle, which trades in for 10 clams, cardboard 15, dead batteries 20, and the computer parts 25. Now, as far as getting the secondary prizes associated with recycling, it is quantity over quality. Can you just uh, get these enemies? Ah. Oh, here he comes. Now, these are the UFOs. Uh, if we check in the faux facts, the full name of these is the Unidentified Flying Oranges. These guys are ridiculously easy to defeat. As you can see, they have barely any uh, HP. Kel is able to one-shot them. And by uh, passing to hero, we can just defeat them all immediately. So if you want to, uh, ooh, counter. If you want to get some easy EXP here, uh, the unidentified flying oranges are very easy enemies to defeat because Kel is faster than them and he can kill them all on the first turn. Anyways, Aubrey learned counter there and that's actually a decently interesting attack of hers. What it does is it overrides the enemy's targeting and forces them to target her, and whenever she gets hit, she uh, launches a counterattack, same as her normal attack damage. It's not quite as good as it sounds, because it doesn't fully override the enemy's AI, so if they were going to do something useless, like just loaf around or stare off in the space or any of their various actions that result in them not doing anything, uh, that will still happen. So it's not quite as good as it sounds. It doesn't force them to attack Aubrey. Now we're going to do a little more recycling here. Fortunately, after the initial recycle, we can just uh, mash the Z key and bypass the jingle. Though if you really want to hear it, it is a mildly catchy jingle. You can let it play. As you can see, uh, in the early game, this is actually a not terrible source of some extra clams if you want to do some shopping. I don't really need it right now, so, uh, or well, I don't think it's terribly useful to me, uh, though I might grab some more rubber bands before we head out. There we go. Every once in a while, uh, you'll hear a little noise upon depositing the recycling, and you get a prize. This one is the one that I only really care about right now, and that is the Seer Goggles. These are a nice little accessory. Uh, in addition to giving a point of defense and the same luck bonus as the three-leaf clover, they increase your accuracy by 200 points to 300. Now, by default, you cannot miss in this game. You have base 100 accuracy and you will always hit unless the enemy does something to lower it. So, when these seer goggles are equipped and triples are already perfect accuracy, that means any accuracy debuff we get hit with, with, get hit with will essentially do nothing. So, the real takeaway from this is we can make Omori happy and he will not suffer an accuracy penalty, but will enjoy a speed buff and a luck bonus, making it more likely for him to get critical hits. Now, it's not too useful in every fight, but for some of the upcoming boss fights, I can very much exploit it to my advantage and do some pretty uh, solid damage with it. And what the heck, we'll buy a banana smoothie. Alright, now that we've gotten that all taken care of... Oh, and I keep forgetting to mention it. Uh, planting the butt certificate in the last video, that actually has an achievement tied to it. If you hadn't completed uh, um, Burly's side quest, presumably you wouldn't be able to plant it. I've always completed Burly's side quest before coming here, just so I have headbutt straight away, so I'm not actually 100% sure what happens if you come here without it. Uh-huh. Captain Space Booth. Space Booth. Boyfriend. Hmm. Kel did say he wanted to be a space pirate. Because it's all coming together now. Except Space Boyfriend is kind of just a loser. 
Oh, that's lame. Yeah, this ain't, uh, this ain't the most exciting uh, space pirate adventure I've ever heard of. Yeah, well, it's worth a shot. We don't really have anything else to go off of. Maybe uh, Space Boyfriend has seen Basil. Absolutely. <laughs> At the very least, a uh, space pirate, he must have access to a spaceship. Maybe he could fly around and look for us. Looks like Aubrey used pep talk on this space pirate. Anyways, got a bunch of space pirates here. Hmm. She, huh? Wonder who she is. Well, it's nice that at least one person has the thief. Looks like, uh, the remaining space pirate, pirates who haven't, uh, left, uh, Captain Space Boys or Space Boyfriends, uh, command, uh, seem conflicted on what to do about him. Uh, probably, probably. Amigo is, uh, kind of just spacing out there. <laughs> Hello, Space Boyfriend! <laughs> At least I'm not the only one who's getting that mixed up. Well, I guess that's one way to go about it. Kel using a Noi on Space Boyfriend. <laughs> I don't think that particularly worked, though. Sweetheart. I wonder if that has any relation to the sweetheart that Pessy guy was talking about in the last video. Well, I'm sure there is, but is it really our problem? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do much adventuring in this condition. I can always get down to some tunes, but it looks like the tape deck is missing. Or rather, the tape deck is missing its tape. Oh dear. Hmm. Is he really that scary when he's angry? Ow. Well, I mean, it has to have. It had to have been in the boombox. That sounds awfully careless of whoever could have thrown it away. Hmm. I don't know, I think he should find healthier ways to deal with his separation anxiety. Seems uh, Aubrey is starting to feel more sympathy for him. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I guess Kel has something of a point. This won't really help us out directly. Oh, Kel, to be as carefree as you. Hmm. Eh, alright. I do have to admit, it is uh, kind of hard to watch him in this condition. Maybe we can just help him out quickly. We still got plenty of daylight to burn. Ooh, a junkyard key. But Snaily's in the way. Oh, a secret entrance. All right. Before we go, I see a keyboard calling my name. Well, Amori, I don't think you have a career as a concert pianist. I wonder if we can let our friends play at some point. We shall see, we shall see. Hmm. Nice little passageway here. I see the third planet from the sun. Absolutely. It's just us versus the world. Alright, so this is the Earth. It's a boss fight. Bonus boss fight. We don't have to fight this, but some pretty good experience to be had for it, so let's uh, get to it.
I'll toss the jacks at him. Now, uh, one thing that uh, I didn't bring up in the uh, boss fight against the guy behind the tree in the last video is that uh, bosses in this game, uh, many of them, have special uh, attacks in their AI script that when they pass a certain threshold for their HP, they'll just launch them automatically, regardless of the turn order. That's uh, what happened when the, the guy buffed himself in the last video. That's uh, important to know for this fight, because uh, the Earth has a pretty devastating attack that it launches uh, after it falls a certain point. So I'm just, uh... Oh, that actually works to our favor. I can have Omori start stabbing now. And you know what? I won't use Headbutt. Uh, yeah. Alright, let's just uh, go on the offensive now. Pass to Hero. It's worth it to know that uh, the damage of uh, Kel's follow-ups are based on the uh, attack stat of the person he's passing to, but the emotional state of the attack, whether it's affected by happy, angry, or sad, that's actually dependent on Kel, which can actually be a little annoying. The takeaway from that is I didn't pass from pass it to Aubrey because it wouldn't benefit from the uh, the uh, attack buff from her being angry. Anyways, we've got this. Uh, we got the planet on the rope. And we win! <laughs> and you thought we would need a supernova to defeat it? Ooh, mock. Now, if I'm paying attention, Omori should be over his maximum for the amount of skills. Yeah. So, goodbye, observe. Mach, this is uh, one of uh, Omori's special debuffing skills, and it's conditional on the enemy's emotional state. If the foe is angry, Omori will greatly reduce their attack, and what, when it says greatly, uh, that means it lowers the attack more than just a standard attack debuff would. Uh, st stats in this game can be uh, buffed or debuffed up to three times, and Omori's uh, debuff here uh, affects that multiple times. I'm not sure if it's two or three. I've never looked too greatly into the conditional uh, debuff skills, just because they're not that great, but we may as well set this for now. As you can imagine, uh, debuffing the opponent's attack when they're angry kind of offsets the benefit of being angry, while uh, giving them the penalty of having lower defense, so it can be situationally useful. I don't particularly care for it too much, just because I feel Marty has better skills to use than that. Also, he eventually learns a skill that just renders it completely redundant. Hmm, looks like Pluto is missing. Looks kind of familiar. I'm pretending like I didn't already spoil this in the last video, because I got careless. Hmm. Man, this must be soul-crushing space pirating. Absolutely, we're gonna help him out. Buddy and dude, true bros. All right, let's get on with this. Hmm, right. Got another wormhole there. We'll just uh, run past him. Now, who is this? All right, more power to you, buddy. Got a backpack. I believe that increases defense by two. Do I want to equip that on? Actually, Kel doesn't have a charm right now, because I forgot to equip him after he lost Hector. So we'll give him that. Two defense is pretty solid, I'd say. Alright, we are in. <laughs> I like the side quest jingle in this game. Alright, so this is our first proper dungeon, the Junkyard. Big area to explore with puzzles to solve, and lots of new enemies that award a lot of experience. My goal for this dungeon before reaching the end of it is I want to get Omori to level 10, because at that point he learns a very good skill, one of his best in the game, in fact. That gold watch, we'll just take a look at it. As you can see, fake gold watch. Doesn't provide any statistical benefit, but once we get to a store we can sell it for some money. One of the few pieces of equipment you can actually sell in this game, most charms cannot be sold. Granola bar, just uh, I believe that's 60 HP that it restores. Well, good luck to you, Kel. 
Righto. Hopefully he finds it right now and we can avoid going through here. Nope, you just found a can. But hey, more recyclables. Suppose I should explain, uh, for recyclables, the number you need to turn in... Ooh, there's the glass bottle. Last one we needed to get. The number you need to turn in is 50 to get everything. And, uh... Like I said, quantity over quality, it does not matter uh, what type of item it is, it's just 50 items in general. Uh, the problem with that is that just off of the ones that you find from treasure chests, you will barely get like half the amount you need, so you will need to grind after a certain point to get them out. And uh, how do you grind? Well, you might have noticed that at the start of the fight, it said that Kel was looking through the garbage. Among the random items he can find, he can find healing items, and he can find rubber bands. It would actually be really helpful at this point if he got those, because those are one of our best sources of damage. He can find cans. Unfortunately, he has a pretty low chance of actually getting cans out of this, but it's the only reliable source of them you have. There are other repeatable instances of being able to get recyclables, but none are as uh, quick or as uh, reliable as just having Kel search through the garbage. Airhorn makes our entire party angry. One distinction between the party-wide toys that inflict emotional states and the single-target ones, single-target ones can be used on enemies, the multi-target ones cannot. And here we got the Doom Box. Well, uh, he's sad, so we'll just leave him be. Uh, he can actually attack our entire party. Uh, the mixtape over there, aside from just attacking us, he can also wrap us up in uh, tape and uh, slow us down. One thing about Omori's attack again, it actually launches his attack on a random enemy, like there. Usually it'll attack the same thing they attacked before, but sometimes it can attack a different enemy, and honestly that's kind of annoying when it happens. Ooh, the Doom Box is angry now, so we'll uh, want to focus some of our fire on him. I'll actually have Kel use Rebound to hit both of them. Rebound also hits slightly harder than a regular attack from Kel, so it's a good idea to use it when you want to pump up his damage a little. All right, not too bad. Awesome. Let's see, Hero got Charm there. That is one of his uh, first skills that draws aggro. He can target a single enemy, he'll go first, and that enemy will be forced to attack him if he launches an attack. The If the enemy launches an attack, I should say. It's honestly not that useful. Uh, later on, he'll get multi-targeting variants that just flatly outclass it. Just uh, healing up my slightly weakened characters here. But Hero does get a few other skills. Uh, in addition to the multi-targeting ones that draw aggro, he gets another skill that, uh, oof, the thingabob, thingamabob. That is the first thing on the list we need to get for the TV girl. But he also gets, later on, a skill that goes first and allows him to debuff the enemy's attack, and that one's pretty useful. A roadblock! <laughs> I get it. Now here's a new mechanic for us. Much like how Mori can cut roots and traffic cones, Aubrey has her own special field ability. <laughs> no, Kel does have his own. Anyways, we can now tag in our party members to make them the leaders. We can do it from the menu, get a little photo of them switching off, or we can hold A and bring up this quick menu. There we go. But we want Aubrey in the front right now. And yes, there is a unique picture for every possible tag off. So that's pretty cool. So we just want to destroy this roadblock. Get another can. And we got a new enemy over there. Ooh, glass bottle. We are killing it on the recyclables. And we've got dial-up. Boy, I did not miss dial-up. Dial-up has a lot of defense, but not very much uh, HP, so... We bring his defense down by making him angry. And, uh, I forget what dial-up can do. Uh, I forget if he does anything to your stats or if he has uh, any particular debuffs he hits you with. I do remember one particularly funny attack he can use on you is he'll run really slowly and that will make, your, make the targeted character frustrated and attack themselves. Kel is out of juice, but we'll eventually be able to restore it. 
And I'm making the enemies angry, partially to make them more susceptible to damage, but also because, remember, when an enemy is angry, it gives 50% more experience than it would otherwise. Those jacks are a handy find there. Alright, chocolate. Hey, the flower puzzle! This is what Daisy was looking for. We'll have to remember to give that back to her when we get back to the playground. Now we got a locked door here. But we need a key. Yes, please. Oh, he didn't like Kel's rudeness. Now here's a hero's special ability. Hero is a very charming individual, and if we need to talk somebody into something, or talk a conveyor bot into switching the conveyor belts for us, Hero is our man. And his charm will come up in a variety of uh, situations throughout this game. Now, for the remaining conveyor bots that we have to talk to, you probably noticed that there was a couple of them. We don't specifically need Hero in the lead to do it, but may as well keep him there. Now, here's a toilet. Toilets in this game, always, without fail, will have ramen in them. Not really sure what the deal with that is, but whatever. Now we can see a blue watermelon in there, but we'll have to come back this way anyway, so I'll save that for later. We want to talk to this conveyor bot. But before we get onto the conveyor belt... Oh, one, before I forget to mention, one very nice ability that Hero has. If Hero is in the lead, and you talk to a shopkeeper, he will get a discount. It's not much, it's like a 10% discount, but it can save you some clams in the early game. Before we get on the conveyor belt... Huh? What's this? Oh yeah! It's the Life Jam guy! He sells Life Jam! It really works! Oh, sure. Alright, let's take on the Life Jam guy! Oh! Well, that did not go as well as I had hoped. Use Life Jam! It really works! Anyways, he gives us some free samples of Life Jam. He gives us three Life Jams exactly, enough to revive our defeated party members. We'll start with Aubrey. And he just explains the benefits of Life Jam. But let's uh, heal up our remaining party members. And if you launch any attacks on Life Jam guy, you will accomplish nothing. He has, like, almost infinite defense, and even Saddlemori can barely scratch him because he has several thousand hit points. But it's okay, he just wanted to demo Life Jam for us. Yes, we did. Now, the other benefit of doing this is that he will heal us. This actually doesn't matter as much as you think, because there's a picnic with Mari coming up very soon. But, hey. Sure, I'll take a Life Jam. Life Jam? It really works! With that taken care of, let's get the key we needed. Junkyard key. Alright, let's just reverse this. And before we get on with the rest of the junkyard, let's just head up here, into here. Am I crazy, or do I see some floating glasses on that chair? Oh, it's a ghost! It doesn't look like we can do anything with them at this point. I wonder if that'll change in the future. And we get a comet hammer. Uh, one thing that kind of stinks about the game is that it doesn't necessarily make it clear what every uh, weapon or charm you get is, or what it's for. Uh, in this case, the Comet Hammer we got is a new weapon for Aubrey. Kind of wish that was more indicative. Sometimes you can clear, you can figure out what goes to who. Sometimes it's really unclear if what you just got was a weapon or an accessory. Alright. And that's the reason I saved this for last, because this conveyor belt just takes us right back to the locked door. Alright, let's head on our merry way. Now, you notice that key icon on the top right? Uh, that is actually the only instance in this area where we need to get a key to move on, so... 
I'm guessing in an earlier version of this dungeon you needed to collect more keys, but uh, that just got changed at some point in development and they never really got around to changing the key UI. Oh well. Just another cassette tape to take out. You know, I think I forgot. Uh, not that it's relevant right now, but with the bunny side quest that I mentioned earlier, there is an achievement for killing bunnies. You need to kill at least 100. Now, I personally have already gotten that achievement, so I'm not going to bother with doing that again. Uh, the last reward from the side quest is at 50, so you don't. If you've already got that achievement, you don't need to worry about killing any more bunnies after that. All right, let's uh, see. I'm getting pretty close to another level up. That purple gauge above your HP and juice is uh, your experience meter. So when it's close to the right like that, uh, you're close to leveling up for your characters. Pretty nice that you're able to keep track of that just at a quick glance. Lemonade, that is a very good juice restorative. That's 75 juice right there. More than we can actually have at this point in the game. All right, let's just grab this garbage. Now, these little uh, picnics here uh, that give you the cutscenes, these do actually restore your HP and juice, but they don't actually unlock the achievement if you use those to heal up. You want to specifically eat the food. But since there's a little bit of dialogue we can get for checking it out, let's have a picnic with our friends. Note that not every picnic we uh, come across from this point on will have one of these cutscenes. Yeah, well, that's a junkyard. Believe me, I, I really wish Kel would grab more cans than he does, because the recycling machine side quest is such a pain. The accessories you get from it are pretty good, but only if you get them right now. If you decide to get them around the end game, they've uh, fallen off considerably and it's not worth the effort. There is a way to relatively quickly farm for cans, though, and I'll show it off probably after we finish up in this area. Now that is a great way to look at it, Mari. We're doing good for the environment here. For the environment! Alright, but I think that's a good stopping point for this video, since we've got a save point right here. So, we'll just wrap up and... Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.